All right, kids, sharpen your pencils. This is going to be a little uh, math in today's lesson. But anyway, uh, harmonic dampener started to come apart. The rubber ring's getting a little loose. It's, uh, let's see if I can get a shot of it here. I think that shows it pretty good. You can see it's actually got a little cock to it, so this one's not long for this world. And uh, I'd rather not have a, uh, oh, I don't know. I'd guess about five, six, maybe seven pound inertia ring come flying off at about 7,000 RPM. So it's time to put the actual good part that I already own, but wasn't on the car, in the car. I ran this one on another engine that I blew up when I got dyslexic on the cam and uh, tried to drive through valve float. So that's where that one came from. But anyway, uh, if you've messed around with uh, small block Chevys before, or you're pretty much the last remaining guy on the planet messing with them like me, not really, but everybody seems to be into LS stuff. Uh, you may have run into this before. Or maybe you need some help with it. Uh, GM, throughout the years, has changed where the uh, the timing marks are. They've changed to different timing tabs on the cover. There were some on the older ones up to, I believe it's about 69. Then they changed it again in, uh, I think it was 1985 or 1986. So, depending on what old cobbled together garbage you have laying around, you may run into this. And if you've ever burned pistons before, like me, because you forgot which freaking way the mark went, you can write it on there for a little reminder. Anyway, the timing tabs moved uh, depending on which timing cover you have. So, the ones that with the uh, timing tab in the 12 o'clock position, those are the 86 and up timing covers. The ones before that, which is what this damper was and pretty much most small block performance parts, are marked for the pre-85 position. Reason being, most of the performance stuff you get, all the circle track stuff and everything else, all those guys like to run two-piece rear main seal engines. Well, two-piece rear main seal came in, well, it ended in 1985, one-piece started in 1986, and uh, it was still a small block, all the heads and everything still changed, but none of the circle track guys ever moved on from two-piece rear main seals. Pretty much all that stuff is still going on. Nobody ever, you know, unless you ordered it custom and really expensive, nobody ever did one-piece rear main seal cranks. So, you end up with a lot of 85 and down. The problem with that is, is if you're running a one-piece for main seal engine like I am to take advantage of hydraulic roller lifters that came in in 1987, yeah, 87 and up engines, 86 was a bastard year that still got regular hydraulic flat tappet lifters and one-piece rear main seal cranks. For anybody looking for a little trivia question, one year bastards. Anyway. Um, if you need to run an 85 and older damper on a newer engine with an 86 and up timing tab, you end up having to do a little wizard math. Um, and especially if you run into it like this, the stock harmonic dampeners on these were six and three quarter inches diameter. ATI, for whatever reason, I'm not an engineer, don't know the engineering behind their stuff, they used six and three eighths as the diameter for their super damper, at least this one. They make different sizes. This is the one I own, so that's what all this is going to be related to. Um, you need to figure out your marks. On this one, I don't think I did the math on it because it actually turns out it was off for a number of years, but uh, it was close enough. My 36 degree mark would have actually been 33 degrees, so it was to the good, so never burned anything up. It ran fine. Probably just could have used a couple more degrees of timing. But anyway, to do the math, you got to figure out what your diameter is. So, and if you're a tradesman like me and you're trying to sit here and hold the tape measure because you don't own a dial caliper that is over six inches. And you're going, I don't know, is it six and three eighths? Is it six and a quarter, six and five sixteenths? You can't figure it out, you can't quite tell, and you still want to be precise. One of the ways you can do it is 
take a piece of junk. This was an intake manifold gasket set because I just got done doing that. And let's see if I can do this half-ass one-handed. Go ahead and tighten that guy up and obviously this ain't perfect, but you can see the mark I made there earlier. That'll get you your circumference. Take that over there, measure it. It turns out it's about 20 inches and a sixteenth. At least it was earlier when I measured it, and I was actually trying to hold it really close. So that came out pretty damn close, and then I uh, measured it later. Turns out it was right. So once you got your circumference, that would be your. This is just a little math for you, a little little back of the Bud Light box math. Your circumference was 20 inches and a sixteenth. You can go ahead and divide that by 360 degrees, which if, you know, you probably learned that in like, oh, I don't know, junior high math, is how many degrees are in a circle. Then you're going to go ahead and get your inches per degree. And this one, it is 55 thousandths per degree. Then you can do a more little math. You know, this one, I didn't measure the stock one. But if you go ahead and multiply six and three quarter inches times pi, which we all know is 3.14159, if you ever sang that damn song, that'll end up telling you what the inches per degree on the stock one is. Happens to be 59 thousandths per degree. And you're going, well, yeah, that's all well and good, but you know, how the hell am I supposed to measure that on a round surface? Well, one of the easiest ways to do it is to go ahead and just get yourself a piece of scratch paper. Yeah, this actually doesn't have my credit card number on it, so that's good. But what you go ahead and do is you can loosen your set screw, set it up to whatever you actually need it. What am I looking for? 95. This actually doesn't need to be precise, but I'm anal retentive right now. Uh, close enough. So what you go ahead and do is you lock down your set screw. You can this, and this is so that you don't have to go out and buy a timing tape or any of that other shit. Chances are they don't make it in whatever diameter you're looking for. Or you're gonna have to wait a week for it or two weeks or the shit's on back order. So you go ahead and set your dial caliper up there. You make a mark at the edge of each one of your jaws. Make sure that that's actually locked in and precise. And let's see, must have been off. It must have been 196. Anyway, um, go ahead and yeah, go ahead and reach the limit of your video capture your phone. Great. Anyway, um, go ahead and make your marks on there. Figure out what everything is. Um, found a little uh, information on the internet that told me. Well, let me allowed me to verify um, that the uh, from the the timing mark on the 85 and older stuff to the 12 degree timing tab was 30 degrees, which it's about what I measured, but it was good to verify. So what I went ahead and did is I marked it 0, 30, and 36, and what that let me do is come over to my fancy dancy what used to be super nice and has now got a nice oops that was almost bad nice coat of surface rust on it sit damn it well it sat nice earlier anyway get that to sit right you can come up here and hold your piece of paper Focus, you fuck. Shout out to AVE. Love your videos, dude. But you can hold it on your marks, and this isn't perfect, so I'm looking at this through the damn phone. But you can go ahead and verify what you believe to be true is actually true, and you can set it up for what actually goes to your engine. 
So what is actually marked as TDC on this damper is actually our 30 degree mark now. Zero is actually 330 and six degrees is 36. So that'll actually let you uh, run the damn thing and uh, have an idea of what the hell you're doing. But anyway, if you're trying to cobble together a bunch of shit on the cheap, you know, you come across some of this shit at swap meet, or you just order the wrong damn parts and then you gotta cobble them together, this is how you do it. So, just use a little math, use uh, some measuring devices, and you can set it up mint. Thanks. Last little pearl of wisdom. Nobody likes a dry hole. Lube it up before you ram it in.